Hey, it's your girl Sam Chesky, and this is Your Fave is Queer, where I talk about your favorite video game characters that are canonically queer. For the first episode, we will be talking about Nadia from the CGI movie Resident Evil Vendetta. And although it is technically a movie, it is still part of the game series, so I'm counting it, and it's my video, so I'll do what I want. So to get right into it, Nadia isn't a very popular name in the Resident Evil franchise, like Leon S. Kennedy, Chris Redfield, and Rebecca Chambers, who are the leads in Resident Evil Vendetta. Although she isn't given much screen time in the movie, she is more developed in the novel adaptation of Vendetta. Now, the novel adaptation of Vendetta was only released in Japanese, but luckily enough, some people have actually translated it into English. And thank you to Highball66 on Tumblr for creating an English version of the novel. I will leave a link to their post down below in the description in case you would like to check out the Vendetta novel yourself. I will also be citing which pages and chapters that the excerpts I am going over in the description. First off, some of you may be wondering, who's Nadia? As described in page 49 of the Vendetta novel, Nadia, the only woman in Silver Dagger, had black bobbed hair and was of German-American descent. And right off the bat, in the very next sentence, she was a lesbian. The gays win. <laughs> the rest reads, she was a lesbian and owned a house in San Francisco that she purchased jointly with her partner. She used to be a SWAT team member in the Los Angeles Police Department. However, after witnessing BOW-related incidents occurring worldwide, she was filled with a righteous indignation and volunteered for the BSAA. The reason why I want to focus on that whole paragraph is because I really like how strong they portray her. Although they have the random just thrown in your face, she was a lesbian, um, they don't let it, you know, take over her whole description. It's her very first description and they focus on her strong sense of righteous indignation. Was that the word? Indignation? <laughs> I know how to say words. They focus on that stuff and how she joined the BSAA. They just have this quirky little lesbian. <laughs> I'll get back to the part where it mentions that she jointly purchased a house with her partner because I'm going to have basically an entire section about that later in the video. But until then, let's get back to talking about how fucking hot, I mean hot, I mean hot, I mean how amazing Nadia is. The homosexuality is showing. Right after that paragraph, it describes a competition that Nadia took part in yearly. It states how she participated in the international sniper competition, surpassing numerous world-class competitors and emerged as the victor. I wish they portrayed more of this in the movie, solely because the movie is seen by so many more people, where the novel is just targeted towards their Japanese audience. I feel like the novel really depicted Nadia as someone very strong and independent, and although she still holds this strong persona in the movie, it's really nice to see how in the novel that she is a lot more flushed out, especially since she is a lesbian woman in Japanese media, which isn't very common. In the novel, we get a lot more fighting scenes with Nadia, a lot of her, Chris, in DC just duking it out with the bad guys, but in the movie obviously focuses more on Chris and Leon, so I mean, I get it, but also Nadia's supremacy. I love being able to read how she fights and how talented they describe her to be, but there was one part that didn't really sit well with me. This paragraph reads, The gap among the mercenaries is more than enough, not even requiring five seconds. Chris and Nadia take about three seconds. For Jill, two seconds would have been sufficient. In my personal opinion, there was no reason to bring up Jill. I love Jill, but I don't feel the need to compare her status to Nadia, where Jill can take two seconds and Nadia takes three. I Maybe it wasn't their intention to compare the two or make it seem like Jill is on this pedestal and above Nadia, but it also wouldn't surprise me if that was what they were going for. For all the female characters in the series, Jill is a very focused one, especially on her partnership with Chris, 
And although I understand that they would want to play up some of these main characters, I don't think they had any reason to just bring her in here and completely disregard Nadia working well with Chris. They felt the need to just bring up, oh, but but Jill is better. Jill and Chris are the, the best partner duo. We just, just please, just please love, please, Jill, Jill, Bella, please guys, please. <laughs> I wish they didn't have to pin the women against each other to try and make Jill look better in this case rather than Nadia, but at least it isn't putting her down as a queer character. I just think that the mini comparison was pretty stupid. Next on page 117, it mentions the pistol Nadia uses, a Desert Eagle. Leon had exchanged his handgun with Nadia's Desert Eagle, a 50 caliber semi-automatic pistol that could fire seven rounds of .5 Action Express ammunition. With each squeeze of the trigger, a small explosion occurred and the recoil reverberated to the top of his head. To me, I kind of found it a little funny. <laughs> One, I've never used a Desert Eagle before, but from what I know, they can be pretty difficult to master, so slay Nadia. Also, am describing the recoil of the gun, kind of pointing out that you have to have a really steady aim for it. Slay Nadia again. Now the funny part is the fact that it c talks about Leon feeling the, the, the recoil. S silly little emo boy, silly, silly little, silly little guy, silly little guy. Tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. I just truly love seeing these closer details that Nadia gets in the novel with how she fights, her character more, her personality a bit more. It's so much more interesting to see how flushed out she is, where in the movie she just doesn't have as much screen time, and I feel like we don't get to see her be as badass as she's described to be in the novel. <laughs> the female names said the most in the Vendetta novel are Rebecca, 356 times, Nadia, 52 times, and Maria, 32 times. For being a side character that isn't one of the villains, I think that's pretty neat. And obviously Rebecca has the most due to being a lead, but also she's amazing and deserves the spotlight. Fun fact, Leon's name is said the least out of the three main leads. <laughs> you silly little guy, tonight will be the ninth. I will fall for you. Back to Nadia, she is such a cool character and I love how they depicted her to be such a strong woman and how she contributes to the fight and to the mission. And even though they had this awkward statement of she's a lesbian, they don't put on any like stereotypes to her really. Not that I've noticed at least, unless anyone wants to point anything out that I missed, but I feel like her being pushed as just a strong woman and not being focused on her being the the queer one, <laughs> it's, it's really cool to experience, especially in a franchise I really enjoy. Now remember when I said I wanted to get to the joint purchasing of a house with her partner later on in the video? It is now later on in the video. Let me get to it. In this section I call, hear me out, <laughs> because I will explain a crazy theory, but it kind of makes sense. And this was both researched on by me and my friend. She also has a thread on Twitter that has her little theories and stuff, so you can go, I'll link that down in the description as well. But I will be talking about it here, along with my thoughts in my perspective. I don't know why I got all like, woo. Anyway, hear me out. Nadia X Ada. Mm-hmm. You heard me right. Ada Wong. Let me explain. In this excerpt on page 64 of the novel, it reads, A single butterfly, a Morpho Aurora Borealis, flew in front of Nadia. Its wings had a vibrant pattern resembling that of a leopard. The fur on its body was thick, and it grew darker towards the center. It seemed more like a wild animal than a butterfly. 
Nadia found herself instinctively following the butterfly's movements with her eyes, reminded her of her lover's red butterfly tattoo on her lower abdomen. Nadia wondered if her own abdomen had any unique markings as well. Now first of all, the obvious. Ada's character is highly represented by butterflies, as seen in games and her outfits, and most specifically that I will be talking about, Resident Evil 4. In the original Resident Evil 4, Ada wears a long red dress adorned with butterflies flying up her leg, and if you notice, there is one butterfly on her abdomen, a red one. The novel states that the butterfly in specific is a Morpho Aurora Borealis butterfly that looks like this. It's a very beautiful butterfly and it apparently reminds Nadia of her lover. Something that my friend pointed out to me though is that it is also the same butterfly that Ada finds in the Separate Ways DLC for the Resident Evil 4 remake. <laughs> Is there a correlation between the fact that they are the same butterfly or the fact that Ada has been depicted with a red butterfly on her abdomen before? Maybe Ada has a double life and the one she goes home to is Nadia. It's very possible in my opinion. We know that Ada isn't even her real name and we don't know how she acts off the clock. Maybe Nadia and Ada are together and with her she can use her real name and let out her real personality. What further backs up this claim to me is Ada's epilogue in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. In the epilogue it reads, a woman looks at herself in a mirror. She used to be called Ada Wong, but this morning she will say goodbye to the name. I'm not Ada Wong anymore. She feels her ab and thinks, this is Ada's scar, not mine. And as she says goodbye to Ada Wong, she can't stop her tears. However, there isn't much time left before her next mission. So what sticks out to me is that Ada has a scar on her ab, and it happens to be a scar that reminds her of that Elias and other life. So possibly this is Ada's point of view at home when she's not on a mission. She doesn't like the reminders of herself as a mercenary, and that scar just happens to be a reminder of it. In my theory, it could possibly be that she got a red butterfly tattoo over the scar, so whenever she's not under the Elias Ada Wong anymore, she can be at home and not be reminded of it. And although I love the idea of women kissing, because it is Ada Wong, so much wrong can also go with this relationship. And here are unfortunately the claims to prove that. <laughs> Ada had a relationship with a man named John Clemmings back in Raccoon City although it was a fake relationship that she used under that Elias. Clemens was very serious about Ada when she was just a plant to get information on Umbrella. She got really deep into the story, making him fall in love with her and trust her, and he even made her name his password. Yet, all she was really doing was using him. Would she do the same to Nadia? In the novel adaptation of Resident Evil Damnation, also only released in Japanese, but thankfully to the same person who translated Vendetta to English, they also translated Damnation. But in the main <laughs> in the main characters page, it is stated that Ada was using the BSAA as a cover. Once they find out that there is no one in the BSAA named Ada Wong on page 99, that is when they start to process a warrant for her. Yet on page 105, it is stated that that warrant for her arrest was just randomly canceled and no one knew who canceled it. Could it have been a certain lesbian BSAA member trying to protect her lover, mayhaps? It could either be Ada using Nadia for little BSAA privileges, or it is just a genuine love between them. I know this theory could possibly upset the Leon and Ada shippers, but like I said, hear me out. It would be kinda cute. I mean, it's a theory, so obviously, we don't know. But it'd be kinda cute. Unless it's the sad version where she's using Nadia. That would break my heart. But like... Kind of cute, kind of cute, right? <laughs> and they were both girls. <laughs> if only I could talk about Ada canonically being a queer character, but unfortunately, 
Capcom has only confirmed one female canonically queer character in the Resident Evil franchise, and that is the amazing Nadia. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is a lie. Lady D exists. Oh my god. I, uh, okay, let me grab my ukulele and apologize really quick. Uh. How do you think they depicted Nadia? Personally, I think they did pretty okay. I think it was pretty nice. Even though the novel and movie are still both very flawed, um, <laughs> I do think Nadia was a fun character. They definitely could have developed her more and had more representation with her, but from what they did, making her be this powerful person not super focused on the fact that, oh, this one's a lesbian, here are these lesbian stereotypes, blah blah blah, um, I think they did well. I think, I, I, yeah. <laughs> She's a great character, she's dropped it gorgeous, and she's a badass character who is canonically queer in the Resident Evil franchise. Let's go! <laughs> Any other queer video game characters that you'd like me to check out? I am focused on canonically queer ones, not ones that are really theorized, even though I know I had my own theory in this. So if you do have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments. I am always happy to research on this stuff. It is very exciting to me and I love learning about video games. I love video games. <laughs> I'd also love to know your opinion on what you think about Nadia, about her depiction, and if you'd like to do your own research as well, I have the links down below from what I was looking at. I'd love to see what you think about it. and. Maybe we can chat about it. You can also join my Discord server if you'd like to talk about it and I'll most likely respond because I am always on Discord. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> Thank you so much to my Kofi members, Mi Madre and Conifer. You two have been supporting me for so long and I'm so grateful for it. Um, it helps me being able to do what I really enjoy and what I really love and it as well helps give me some motivation knowing that I have people who want to support me. And I know one of them is my mom, but I love my mommy. <laughs> Shameless mommy plug. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. Comment down below suggestions of other videos you would like me to make. And don't forget to subscribe. I mostly make videos about video games, um, but I also do some skits and covers every now and then. And I would love for you to stick around to see what I do. Again, like, comment, subscribe, and like always, adios muchachos. Look at my contest. Nadia date me.